welcome to Ruskin Park in South London on the border of Camberwell and Herne Hill. Today we invite you to join us on the special walk around this beautiful green space to learn more about Ruskin and his philosophies on nature. We're going to stop at six points around the park where you'll hear local residents reading extracts from specially commissioned short essays. So without further ado, let's start our journey with an introduction to Ruskin written by Dr. Rachel Dickinson. John Ruskin was an influencer. Born in London in 1819, the same year as Queen Victoria, in his early 20s, he became famous as an art critic. Ruskin became increasingly aware of the effects of the industrializing world around him and the problems of his day. Unfair labor practices and low wages, no universal health care, pollution, and the destruction of nature. Whole communities growing up without fair access to education. The Victorians did not have social media, but Ruskin used technologies that were available. Public letters, lectures, newspapers, books, and an efficient postal service to communicate his vision of a fairer society and a more beautiful world. He made a difference for the better. His ideas influenced the founders of the arts and crafts movement, the National Trust, and the early Labour Party. His ideas also rippled across the globe. Gandhi said, reading Ruskin's book, Unto This Last, brought about an instantaneous and practical transformation in my life, and therefore transformed India. Like Ruskin, we can connect with nature, starting here on our own doorstep. With these words by Rachel Dickinson, fresh in our minds, join us for a walk with John Ruskin. Blossoming Almond Trees by Alex Mayer. Almond trees were significant to John Ruskin and inspired his thinking. In his autobiography, in the chapter titled, Hearn Hill Almond Blossoms, he reflects on his youth and time spent in South London. For Ruskin, the blossoming of almond trees was the second joy of the calendar year, following on from the primary, if inferior, flowering of the snowdrops. The blossoming of almond trees, often only visible for 10 days, should remind us of Ruskin's advice to truly look, having fixed attention with both eyes and mind. Without intention or focus, a distraction, another call on our senses or the casual decision to change our path can mean we could pass by without noticing this harbinge of spring and of the comfort of the warmer months ahead. Crafts and the Rural Idyll by Neil Sindon. From 2015 to 2017, I lived in Ruskinland, surrounded by beautiful oak trees, wildflower meadows and orchards, some old, some recently planted. Ruskinland was the heart of a utopian rural community based in the wire forest in the Midlands. It was established by followers of John Ruskin in the late 19th century. So as Ruskin's life progressed, he became increasingly disturbed by the dehumanizing effects of rapid industrialization. And in seeking what ought to happen to address this, he was inspired by observing rural economies and the multiple crafts that they sustained. In the wire forests, such crafts included charcoal burners, sawyers, woodcutters, hauliers, hurdle makers, bark peelers, lath cleavers, gatherers and sellers of firewood, basket and besom makers, wheelwrights, coopers and carpenters. Ruskin's passion led him to found in 1871 the Guild of St George with its mission to promote the arts, crafts and rural environment. He influenced a revival in crafts, not only in England, but also internationally. The majestic Turkey oak tree, under which we are standing, with an intricate dedication to John Ruskin carved into its fallen branch, 
helps us to think how we could reinterpret his ideas about the rural economy and crafts to our current age. Views by Dr. Mark Frost. During his lifetime, Frost witnessed transformation of this part of London from a semi-rural district to a suburban sprawl. The act of looking was immensely significant to Ruskin. Taking in a view was a means of understanding the world, and in particular, the interplay of nature and culture. For John Ruskin, nature was of unique importance in how it acted as a restorative and a form of hope. He said, to see clearly is poetry, prophecy, and religion all in one. His keen sensitivity to the effects of human life on a precious planet would inform his sight as he gazed from here onto those tall towers concerned with the only march of modern civilization and consumerism. The complex challenges of today, climate change and resource depletion, would surely have accelerated his relentless quest to teach the benefits of an alternative and kinder ways of living. Perhaps you'll find comfort in this park, this oasis of green, continuing its helpful work. If we gaze with a Ruskinian eye over the world, we too can contribute to his restoration and endorse Ruskin's vital insight engraved on his bench that there's no wealth but life. The Alps by Andrew Hill. The Alps exerted a huge influence on John Ruskin's work. Before the age of 45, he claimed to have spent 11 summers and two winters there. They were a place for recreation, but also a great source of inspiration. He often passed 10 hours a day watching, drawing, painting, and comparing the skies, the streams, the flora and the flow of glaciers. Ruskin's interest was more than aesthetic. The Alps were also a place for observation of nature and for pursuing his passion for geology. His work was even recommended by the president of the Geological Society. He connected the underlying structures of the mountains for example, the layered masses of the Matterhorn, to architecture. And he observed how human industry was changing the Alps permanently. Recent study of the same glaciers that Ruskin chronicled has shown the extent of damage wrought by climate change. John Ruskin recognised that mountains and lakes are a place of interconnection between nature art and the human race. We mess with those links at our peril. Urban Sprawl by John Newman. Ruskin loved gardens. You can still trace the outline of garden walls of the houses demolished on the east side of Ruskin Park. Ruskin lived in two houses near here for over 60 years. First on Hearn Hill and then on Denmark Hill, close to this spot. But the development of the area, the loss of fields, streams and hills, and the coming of railways and pollution saddened him. Ruskin's views made him a forerunner of today's concerned environmentalist. He was also an advocate for a revival in the Gothic style of architecture. But as Gothic became the style of choice for the suburban housing that was destroying the landscapes of his childhood, he came to loathe it. Finally, it forced him to leave South London for a new home, Brantwood in the Lake District. Ruskin wrote, I've had an indirect influence on nearly every cheap villa builder between here and Bromley. And one of my principal notions for leaving my present house is that it's surrounded everywhere by a cursed Frankenstein monsters of, indirectly, my own making.
Drawing of Trees and Nature by Dr. Sarah Atwood. John Ruskin's writing spanned the broad range of his interests from art and architecture to science, education and political economy. Yet, at the heart of all he wrote and taught lay his firm belief in seeing clearly. As he declared in one of his books about nature, if you can paint one leaf, you can paint the world. The greatest benefit of drawing is not technical prowess, Ruskin thought, but spiritual transformation. Ruskin himself describes a revelatory experience in the forests of Fontainebleau, south of Paris, when in 1845 he was sketching an aspen tree. This produced in him a heightened awareness of the tree itself and an apprehension of the bond between the human mind and all visible things. Our modern lives are busy and at times anxious and isolated, especially during the years of the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, more than ever, Ruskin's invitation to look closely and see clearly offers us a way of re-engaging with the natural world, of shifting our perspective and finding meaning in what we often overlook. We will not learn to care for nature until we know and love it. Reverence requires attention. We can start by opening our eyes. In this fast-paced and uncertain world, it's easy to feel disconnected from the natural world around us. But Ruskin understood its deep importance to our well-being. He reminds us that there is no wealth but life. Life, including its powers of love, of joy and of admiration. We invite you to visit Ruskin Park and do the walk for yourselves. But until then, next time you take a stroll in your local neighbourhood, we hope you'll take some of John Ruskin's insights along with you too. <laughs>